Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another anime figure unboxing and review video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at none other than the My Hero Academia Figma Shoto Todoroki, my personal second favourite character in the entire series. I couldn't be more excited to get this guy opened up. I've already really liked the other figures we've already reviewed on the channel, so of course I'm super hype for this guy. I love the look of those effect pieces. Don't worry, we will be comparing this guy to the cheaper alternative being the McFarlane release throughout the course of this video. Now I picked up mine from a local store called Critical Hit. I will include the link in the description below to their website. They may potentially have more. I don't know, I went in person to the store and they had this guy on the shelf, so of course I had to pick him up, but you may find some on the website as well. Otherwise, you could potentially go ahead and pick him up off of eBay. What we are gonna do now though is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here, of course, we have the box art for Shoto. I really do like the blue motif that goes around the edges, but wouldn't it have been cool if they split it down the center and did blue on the left and red on the right? That would have been a really awesome throwback, of course, to the character himself. We do have a product shot on the side and a bunch more on the back. Now, as I said, Shoto is actually my second favorite character, second only to All Might. Yes, I really do like All Might, maybe because he's voiced by Chris Sabat, the same gentleman who does Vegeta's voice. And yes, I know, I'm a heathen for watching the English dub, but I can't help myself. I really do enjoy the voice acting in the English dub. And here, of course, we have Shoto himself. So far, first impressions are again pretty positive. I love the feeling of these Figma releases in hand, and the subtle translucency to the skin itself. They definitely have nailed that. I cannot wait to compare this guy to the rest of the figures in the line so far. Now, of course, you can see he does come with a few accessories. So what we are gonna do now is get all of the accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the bits and pieces that come with Shoto. Let's start off by taking a look at the display base first. It's the same as we've seen with the other figures in the line. I love it. It's nice and small, but still allows for a fairly decent range of motion. Interestingly enough though, with Todoroki's one, it's more of a frosted plastic. This is the one that came with Uraka, and it's much more clear. Not exactly sure if they've done that to mimic the ice motif, but if they have, it's a really nice attention to detail. Overall though, it's pretty much identical to all of the other display bases. It also comes with this additional piece, with a bit of a kick up at the end, just to allow for more dynamic poses in the air. Now Todoroki comes with two of the very best effect pieces that I've seen from Figma to date. This is of course his ice effect and I love it. You can see a footprint on the front there because of course it's kind of coming out of his foot. It looks really icy and I love how it comes across. It's painted with this white sort of dry brushing over the top just on the edges to give it this really awesome effect. I love this piece and honestly I wish there were more icy effect pieces just like this one in the box. Now of course for his other side he comes with a flame piece. This is meant to clip on to his arm. I also like this. It's got a gradation to the color. It's darker then goes to a bit more of a lighter orange then darker towards the top once again. And it does look like a flame. It does a really nice job of capturing his quirk effect in plastic form. Now he also does come with a wide array of hands already included on this little sled piece. Basically what this does is it stretches out those pig ports to make sure when you're popping it on the wrist itself you don't have to fight with the hands and I really do like that. Unfortunately one of my hands as you can see is kind of warped out of the box. I will have to heat that up but I'm sure that'll fix itself as soon as I apply just a little bit of heat. Now he does come with two different faceplates. This one is more of a smiley, as smiley as Shoto does get, and an angry faceplate. I love the detail of the scar and also the eyes with the one blue and the one black. They are exceptionally well done and don't worry, you'll see these on the figure later on in the video. He also does come with the Figma accessory bag. I love these bags. I know they're just little Ziploc bags, but it's a real handy piece. You don't have to go fishing through the box to get 
get all the accessories out if you want to just change a simple pose you can pull out your figma bag and bob's your uncle we are going to do now though is get shoto himself out here and take a closer look and here we have him standing straight up and down in the light box no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that and so far, I'm really liking how this guy turned out. That's Shoto Todoroki shrunk down into plastic format and sitting there, or I should say standing there in front of me. I really like this release. Now, while it's not 110% flawless, there are a couple of things which we'll talk about later on in the video. I'm still rather impressed. I like this softer aesthetic. It kind of screams anime, and that's perfect for a My Hero Academia release. I'm really impressed with the scale of this guy as well, but we'll again touch on that later in the video. What we are going to do now though is take him off the rotating turntable, punch in and take a closer look at the details. And here we have him up close and personal. And I am super glad that Good Smile Company decided to go with this outfit rather than going for his season one hero costume like they've done for all of the other releases because if you'll remember, in season one, he had this super weird outfit that kind of had this rock ice effect on his left side. Thank goodness they ditched that both in the show and in figure format here. Now let's start off with a comparison to the McFarlane release. Now I didn't really hate the McFarlane version and I still don't. I think they both look exceptionally good, except for some reason with the McFarlane one, he has a red right eye. Whereas on the Figma version, it's more of a black gray color, which is far and away more accurate. I also really like the way they've done the hair. It does have a definite split down the middle, but it also has a couple of strands of the red going over the top. It's not just a straight line down the top there, much like it was for the McFarlane version. This one is a little bit more dynamic. I also really like the blue of the outfit. It's not as dark as potentially it could have been, but I like that. It adds a little bit more life and color to your shelf. He also has this vest section, which initially I did think was a separate piece, but it does appear to actually be part of the sculpt itself. Now, some people were complaining about this rubberized section. They were calling it the diaper. I personally don't really see an issue. This part of the body does nicely sandwich on the inside and the legs go up there as well. It does a perfect job, in my opinion, of trying to hide those joints while still carrying over the design of the character. He does have his belt with these little first aid canisters picked out in a nice silver paint. Now coming down to the legs, you do have the accurate detail with this X on the front there. It did have it on the McFarlane version, but for some reason it wasn't centered over the knee, whereas these ones definitely are. You can see the X is in the right spot. Moving down finally to his boots, these look pretty much perfect. They're chunky enough while still being in proportion to the rest of the outfit. I don't really know where all of the complaints were coming from for this Shoto figure, but in my opinion, this is the very best version of Shoto in action figure format that's been released by pretty much any company. Now for our quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Shoto standing next to his McFarlane self, along with All Might for good measure. And as you can see, the McFarlane version of Shoto is way too big. He's even taller than All Might, if you don't count the hair spikes at the front, of course. And his head is significantly larger. I know it's an old toy making trick to make the hands and feet bigger and the head smaller to try and trick your eye into thinking, hey, that's a big buff dude. But then when you pair it in the same line next to what's supposed to be a teenager, it doesn't really work if you're making him the same height as your biggest dude. Super weird that they decided to do that, so I personally am more than happy with the height of the Figma version alongside this All Might. He only comes up to maybe the bottom of All Might's pecs, which I think is about right for his height. He is a kid after all, but let me know what you think of this comparison down in the comments below. Next up for a Figma comparison, here we have the line so far. There's only one more to review, and that's of course Kirishima coming up very soon on the 
channel. I'm personally super excited to add yet another figure to the lineup because Class 1A is shaping up very, very nicely. I'm hoping that Figma keeps this line going. I hope they do an Eater and even more characters from the class as well as potentially some teachers and villains. But who knows, they seem to have slowed down quite substantially with the announcement of these figures. Maybe now that Season 5 is coming back on, they may pick it up once again, but I guess only time will tell. Nevertheless, I'm really liking how all of these guys and gals are standing side by side. Just going over articulation on Shoto. Now bear in mind, this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. I'm sure when you get yours in hand, you can push the joints slightly further than I'm willing to go. Starting off with the head sculpt itself, it's on the usual Figma style joint with a pretty darn decent range of motion. It's like this ball joint pig combo sort of deal. The arms themselves go out to about there. Bear in mind there's a pretty strong lip up the top of the arm so you do have to tuck it on the inside to get the maximum range of motion. They go forward, rotate round pretty much the full way, a butterfly joint up there as well, and a swivel for good measure. You do have a single bend in the elbow which gets you past 90, and a regular Figma style joint for the wrist itself. The torso does have multiple joints, one up the top then one down below, going forward back, swiveling and pivot side to side. The legs go forward the full way and out as well, swivel up there. Then you do have a single bend for the knee which gets you past 90 degrees. You do have a swivel at the top of the boot and of course a regular Figma style joint for the ankle which does have forward back and pivot side to side. Finally, last but not least, you do have some toe articulation. Just wrapping up on the Figma My Hero Academia Shoto Todoroki. Now going into this, I was pretty darn excited because Shoto is my second favourite character in all of My Hero. And honestly, I can say, to me at least, they've done this character justice in action figure format. First of all, a huge thank you to Good Smile Company for not going with the Season 1 outfit. I much prefer this look and I'm glad that they do as well. It's the superior look for Shoto and they nailed it in plastic format. I love the effect pieces, I love the softer sculpt and paint applications. Usually I wouldn't say that, I prefer a bunch of washes and shading and harder details, but it's based off an anime so I think it works perfectly in this aesthetic. I just love the way it looks. Could it have come with even more effect pieces? Yeah, absolutely. That would have been just icing on the cake, but this is still a really solid release. And so far I've been really enjoying the My Hero figures. I cannot wait to eventually do a collection tour video and show off all of the My Hero figures standing side by side in the display. Now I actually picked up mine from a local store called Critical Hit. If you are looking for him, they may have more in stock, you'll have to check their website, otherwise eBay or even your local comic book stores may have him available. Also, if you are heading down to the description, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.